It has a pulsing red glow. It's got a heartbeat. What could it be? Ah, there's a power button down here. Oh, I look at that. It lights up. This is a, about the smallest possible build you could do for a AMD Raven Ridge 2400G system. Up to the side here, you'll recognize something a little more commonly saw with AMD processors. And uh, that is not the stock cooler. That is the cooler from a 1700 that I had and not used because my 1700 is water cooled. And so I had the cooler laying around. The stock cooler it comes with is the Wraith Stealth. This is the Wraith Spire. There's also a Wraith Max, which is um, more square and boxy. Also has the ring on it, though, that lights up. And the case, which may look a little unique, is 3D printed. I, uh, I've been wanting to try a 3D printing a computer case for a long time. And it's obviously a mini ITX board. It's the Gigabyte Gaming 3, 5 mini ITX. Walked in the Micro Center. They had it on the shelf with a sticker right on it. It said Raven Ridge Ready. And it sure was. Didn't have to update any BIOS. Dropped the uh, chip right in and bam, it worked. Uh, I did update the BIOS past that, but the BIOS that was included on the board was a uh, compatible uh, BIOS for the 2400G and the 2200G. And so you can see it's it's pretty small. The case itself, this part here, the clear part, is printed out of PETG. You printed that point, I printed with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle at 0.5 layer height, so double what you would normally do because the regular 0.4 nozzle with a 0.2 millimeter layer height uh, was saying about 24 hours of print time, and I just didn't want to let my printer run for 24 hours. So I uh, decided to try our larger nozzle and went with the 0.8 at 0.5 millimeter height and reducing the infill sum, and I got it down to a five and a half hour print, so major reduction. Three quarters uh, reduction. So only a quarter of the time of the original print would have been with the smaller nozzle. And for something like this, which is pretty much just a big plastic box, yeah, it's got some lines in it, but uh, looks perfectly fine, and it's tough as tough as nails because your layer is a little bit thicker, you're a little bit wider. Uh, I mean, it's Petchy is an amazing plastic. It is one of the most resilient plastics for 3D printing, and virtually unbreakable. It just kind of bends and tears eventually. It does not break if you drop it, snap the top. Is not PETG. The top is PLA, which is kind of your traditional filament. I ran out of clear PETG printing this. This was 30 meters worth or something like that. It's quite a bit. Uh, I don't remember the exact measurement that they quoted in the uh, for how long it was gonna, how much it was going to take to print. So this is PLA. Uh, it's silver PLA. Comes out looking gray. Uh, I don't really believe it's anything quite silver. And this is uh, a little bit more brittle. Print it up in the same layer height, put the same nozzle. Uh, had to slow it down a little bit. PLA is a little bit more stringy. I guess is the way I would describe it, stringy, gooey. So uh, you gotta slow it down a little bit, but it printed okay. Obviously you can see it works. And uh, so you're looking at about 186 millimeters by 186 millimeters by, I think it's about 75 in height. So the biggest print I have done on my printer, my printer prints 200 by 200 millimeters. So this is right up to the edge of it for the most part. And it uh, worked good. I had only one problem. Uh, PETG does have a tendency to want to warp. And you can see this is bowed here, so it warped a little bit. It's not too bad. It may look a little exaggerated on the camera maybe, but not too bad. Uh, has no ill effect to the case. This is warped on the front. And uh, I had it. You know, with, uh, I use hairspray as a uh, way to keep prints down, and even with that, it's still lifted. These big prints like that, you tend to have that kind of problem where you have heating and cooling at different rates, and things start to warp, and things lift. But again, like I said, no ill effects. The printer will kind of self-correct itself. Uh, the layers just kind of squish in a little bit, and eventually just fix themselves going across. So uh, we'll call it a feature. It's a, a curved side panel. Or bottom panel. If you look on the bottom here, you can see all the infill lines. You can see the, the hatch marks. So that's the 15% infill. Plenty enough for something like this. Let me flip around to the back. 
You got the uh, IO shield fits in there nice. You have a power plug down here, a little bit of a mess up on printing there, but again, uh, no ill effects. And uh, so you can see it's uh, came out pretty decent. I, I can't complain. For five hours for this part, and about an hour and a half, or maybe an hour for this part, for six, six and a half hours later, I have a uh, case that works. Uh, sucks with nice cool air. It's the only fan in here because obviously there's no other room. But it blows plenty over the VRMs and everything, and there's plenty of ventilation. They got a fence on this side. There's also a fence on this side, so we want to lay it this way. So, plenty of ventilation. Also, as for the AMD, I am highly impressed by the uh, 2400G. I have a 1080 by 2560 ultra wide monitor, and uh, it can play Battlefield 1 on low settings. Um, I'll say from like 48 to up to 60 frames per second. Which is really impressive for no video card, just an APU. So, uh, props to AMD, it does a really good job. It's a neat little, uh, system, neat little box. And, uh, just gotta give you a bit of a view down in there. You see there's a Pico power supply right there. There is no internal power brick, the power brick is on the floor down here. It's running off a Dell Optiplex old, uh, Power brick, I think it's 220 watts, so way more than this ever draws. This draws at, I would say, at max. Uh, at max, 150 watts. It is overclocked. It's overclocked. And the CPU itself is not overclocked. The CPU is stock. I see no reason to. It runs at 3.6, boosts at 3.9. I've seen it boost higher than that. I've seen it boost up to 4.1 on my system. Uh, maybe I'm just lucky. Uh, uh, the. Uh, GPU, though, is overclocked. The internal GPU is overclocked to 1600 megahertz. And the RAM, which you can see pulsing in the front here, is some Trident RGB that I took out of my main system to put in here to see give it a shot. Um, being a little bit faster, I have 3200 uh, megahertz DDR4, and this is 3600. Although I can't get it to run quite 3600, I can get up to about 3333, 3400. Uh, so a little bit faster, but between the RAM and the GPU overclock, does a pretty good job. It really does. Um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. If you are interested in having the uh, files for the case, let me know in the comments. I can uh, put them up on uh, Thingiverse or something like that. Uh, like I said, there is uh, this, this hole needs to be enlarged ever so slightly. It's a little small. It was kind of tight. I had to do a little hand modification. Uh, I did not put a power button hole. I just left a blank. I just drilled the hole myself. That way you can put it wherever you want. I'll leave that blank. I'll leave the hole in the back for the power supply and everything else. Uh, the vents on the side. And some little standoffs built in for mounting the uh, motherboard. And you just use some plain old kind of small little Phillips wood screws and just screw right into the plastic. It'll hold it no problem. Um, but thanks for watching the video. Uh, leave some comments or questions if you have anything. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more.